You're welcome. Now, keeping them honest, how lawmakers in Washington quietly, very quietly, acted to make keeping them honest a whole lot harder. Ordinarily, our elected representatives turn nearly everything they do into a press release or a photo op, but not this time. No one wants their fingerprints on this one, a move that, so to speak, sheds darkness, not light, on those overseas fact-finding trips that lawmakers seem to love, the kind that take them to exotic places with big money interest groups picking up the tab. Let's get more now from Justice Correspondent Pamela Brown. Members of Congress have had the travel bug for years, visiting places like the old city in Jerusalem to get a sense of the age-old problems there. In fact, Israel, France, Turkey, and Ireland rank among the most popular destinations for lawmakers who are traveling there for free because private sponsors pick up the tab, totaling millions of dollars each year. It used to be each member of Congress must reveal who paid their tab on their personal financial disclosure forms, one of the most high-profile forms lawmakers must file. Now that requirement has changed. It's clearly been done to allow members to escape accountability for lavish trips. Whenever a member of Congress takes an expensive trip, watchdog groups and their constituents ask questions. Why did they need to take this trip? And if they don't have to reveal this trip on their financial disclosure forms, people won't know about it. Buried on page 35 in the House Ethics Committee's guidelines provided to Congress members states the change, meaning the gift of travel, regardless of its dollar value and paid for by a private source, does not need to be reported. The unpublicized change went unnoticed until a reporter with the National Journal spotted it. The chairman of the House Transparency Caucus says that's part of the problem. I only know what I read in the newspapers. I did not know this had taken place. Now, Congress members must disclose all their travel records to the clerk's office instead. The House Ethics Committee says the information is still easily accessible and the change streamlines the process. Congressman Quigley disagrees. You know why Supreme Court Justice said that sunshine is the best disinfectant? It doesn't hurt us to be uh, duplicative. I think it helps us at a time when trust in Congress is at an all-time low to be as uh, open and accountable as we possibly can. The trips in question are financed by private, nonprofit groups, usually billed as fact-finding missions. House Democratic Leader Nancy Pelosi is speaking out about the change in a statement, asking the House Ethics Committee to reverse course. While the committee's aim was to simplify the disclosure process, Congress must always move in the direction of more disclosure not less, she says. And in a statement, the Ethics Committee tells CNN that it continues to enforce the requirement that all House members and staff who wish to accept privately sponsored travel must continue to receive prior approval and file detailed paperwork about any such trip within 15 days. Neither of those requirements have been changed or diluted in any way. And, John, the committee is committed to effective and efficient public disclosure, according to the Ethics Committee, in the statement that it provided to CNN. You know, Pamela, we always complain about the lack of bipartisanship in Washington. I suppose if there's good news here, it's a bipartisan shrouding of disclosure and fact-finding here by the Ethics Committee. Explain to our viewers who this committee is. You know, we have the names in the pictures right now. We're going to put them up on the screen right now. This is a rare committee because it works differently than the others in Congress. No, that's absolutely right, John. So there are 10 members of the House Ethics Committee, and it is the only standing committee uh, that is split evenly among Republicans and Democrats. Now, uh, we don't know how each member voted in this case because those votes are kept secret, but we do know there has to be a majority for a vote to pass, and that means that members of both parties would have had to have signed off on this request requirement change. As John? I said, a bipartisan shrouding going on here. Pamela Brown, thanks so much. I want to bring in Peter Schweitzer, the president of the Government Accountability Institute. He joins me live right now. Peter, you know, you're an expert in this type of thing. How concerning is this move, this change in the dead of night to you? Well, it's just another example of, of how Congress is operating. Uh, you talked about it. You've got this bipartisan shrouding. This is one of the few areas that we seem to get both political parties to cooperate on, and that is limiting the access that people have to information on who is trying to influence them, who is giving them favors. But the second problem is this notion that the emphasis is entirely on their own convenience. The rationale that they're giving for changing this disclosure requirement is it's more convenient for them 
them. Now, we don't want them to do unnecessary paperwork, but, you know, John, uh, when was the last time they tried to make government forms for us more convenient? Uh, to me, it's just an example of Congress being detached from the very real concern that people have about ethics in Washington. Yet to be clear, as you were saying, they still have to disclose this type of information. They just have to disclose it in fewer places, one place rather than two. And for reporters, it's not the place that we usually look for this information, so it is harder to get. Isn't that the issue here? That's exactly right. And you have to really know where to look for it. In other words, you have to go to the House Ethics website. You can search for it. But what it does really, John, is it depersonalizes it. Look, the reason that people are sponsoring trips for powerful members of Congress on certain committees is they want to influence them. They want access. They want time with them. They want to give them a nice trip because they're hoping that they will curry favor. If that's not on their personal financial disclosure form, but it's instead on this sort of database on this web site that you've got to know about to find, it depersonalizes it. And for voters who are interested in understanding what perks or favors are being done for members of Congress, it, it really makes it difficult to find. And, and if we are going to have self-governance in this country, we need to have voters that can access that kind of information easily. And knowing is all voters really want here, because there are legitimate reasons to go on trips like this. Congress people can work together, which is always a good thing. They can learn more about the issues they're covering, which is always a good thing. The flip side of that, though, is when you get these Jack Abramoff situations. Everyone always remembers him, the lobbyist who was eventually indicted, served time in prison for, among other things, bribing public officials. Is that the concern here? I think it's a combination of things. I mean, uh, certainly you have special interests, whether they're corporations, labor unions, trade associations, that will funnel money to, say, a nonprofit organization, which is the legitimate entity that can, you know, sponsor a trip like this, uh, that they can interest them. But I think it's not just sort of the extreme cases like the Abramoff case. Uh, I, I think just this is sort of the currency of how Washington works. And that is members of Congress, I think it's human nature, are going to feel more beholden Holden to somebody who has given their family or themselves a nice trip to, say, Europe or Asia. Uh, it's just the nature of the way human beings operate, and especially if they get more face time with them. So it's part of the influence industry. We're all realistic and recognize that it takes place, but it's got to be disclosed and it's got to be accessible in an easy way where voters and reporters can find it. All right, Peter Schweitzer, uh, maybe they will change this decision. They do have that chance. Appreciate you being with us.